Hello everybody and welcome to a Doctor Who ranking video. Today, the stories from season 12 of the show. Before we get started, just a quick couple of things. Firstly, this ranking is of course entirely my opinion. Yours probably won't align with it that similarly, although I'll say that with this one there's probably a higher chance of that happening than normally there is. So as long as we understand that this is just based on subjective opinions and it's something to have fun with, then let's get started in ranking the five stories from Doctor Who Season 12, keeping this thing very spoiler light. Revenge of the Cybermen. This is the return of the Cybermen after something like five years? Six years? It had been quite some time since they were last on Doctor Who, and they returned to this story, which no one really discusses all that much, because there's not much in it to actually discuss. Very little happens within this thing. The Cybermen show up, they go around an asteroid, they go around a spaceship, and then it ends, and what are you left with? Some ill-fitting music, some kind of cool scenery that feels underutilized to me, aliens and characters that really don't impact the story all that much, and some questionable choices. The only thing this one really has going for it is its main characters, and even then it does feel like sometimes you get them underutilized. Sarah Jane is in this thing, but there's points where she has very little to do, which is a shame because she's such a great character, I feel, and that's also one of the few things that I'm kind of latching onto with this story is its characters, so I don't really have much to appreciate about what was done with this one. I understand, you know, not everyone is going to be great, and this is the case of that. It's not bad, it's just fine, has plenty of boring moments and just dull scenes with some things that do save this one. Also, the second half absolutely is the weaker half. There's more interesting stuff going on as you learn about this situation. I mean, it's okay at the end of the day, I wouldn't call it a bad story, but it's certainly not going to be the first one I put on if I want to watch a season 12 story. Robot probably suffers most from being a transitionary episode. It takes the previous era of the show, John Pertwee's, Barry Latt's, Terrence Dicks, all of that, and it tries to blend it with this new Doctor, because of course this is a Barry Lett story, and unfortunately, while it is pretty good, it feels odd to me. It's kind of a weird experience, and I like it for the most part, but it fails to really have a distinctive vision for the show because it's not trying to do that. And I think that's something that really holds it back within the season because you have several stories that do feel distinctive, that do feel like they are their own thing, particularly in the middle of the season. And then you have this one, which just exists and is pretty enjoyable to watch, especially as you get this fresh face for the Doctor, which is probably the thing that is most noteworthy about this actual story, is that you have a new Doctor. Outside of that, what is there to really gain from this thing? What is there to really latch onto? It's a pretty standard story that you've probably seen pretty similar ones to if you've seen John Pertwee's era of the show, and maybe you'll really enjoy seeing this blend of two different eras, and while I liked it, to me it feels like an ill-fitting way to begin this era. The Sontaran Experiment is another one that people don't really discuss all that much, which for me is a bit of a shame because there's a lot to like here. It's very short at only two parts long, you really don't get the sense that your time is being wasted. You know, you start this thing and then in another 45-50 minutes, it's over and you've finished the experience. So it's one of those stories that is very rare in Classic Who, where it is so short that the way it's formatted has to be a little bit different. Usually you get to a certain point in a classic Doctor Who serial where you kind of have to shift gears a little bit, something else has to happen, maybe a new threat is introduced, or the location switches after you get to a certain point because you kind of have to keep things interesting and allow more things to happen. But with this one, it's very simplistic in what it's trying to do. You go to one location, you learn about this Sontaran and how it is influencing things, and the way that it is being a threat, 
and you just explore that for a little bit, have fun with it, and end the story. And I really appreciated that because it's just not something that you get very often in this era of Doctor Who. I believe it is the only two-parter in all of the 1970s. And while it does stand out in its format, it's also just a really enjoyable and fun story to sit down and watch all the way through. I have a lot of fun with this thing, and I know that some people find it dull, some quite like it. It's definitely going to be hit or miss depending on the person, but for me it was an absolute hit, and really fits within this era of the show. I like this one a lot. The Ark in Space starts this fresh, new vision for Doctor Who with Philip Hinchcliffe as producer, and you really get the sense that they are trying to do something different. Just take this story of the Ark in Space and try to compare it to any of the stories that have come before in William Hartnell's era, John Pertwee's era, Patrick Troughton's era, and the closest you'll really get is Base Under Siege story, because it's kind of a Base Under Siege story, but even then, in that case, its approach to having this monster in this location is different. What it's doing is absolutely a new thing to what has been done before, and even its similarities, the approach to this story absolutely feels like they are going for something else, and I love how it blends these really dark elements with just the fun you have of going on this adventure with these main characters, which is something Season 12 does really well. You have all these main characters, which I have a good time with, and I really like watching throughout these stories, and then you have the actual story where there is some dark stuff happening in here, and it allows for moments where you can explore that, while also just having a good time with what it's doing. That is a super important thing that I think they did a really good job of capturing in here, and really managing to let this story be its own thing. This is where Season 12 absolutely kicks off for me, because while Robot is, yes, pretty good, this is a brand new vision for Doctor Who that is just so well captured. Genesis of the Daleks was probably always going to be first place. I mean, it just does so much within its six parts. It is the first story within this era to attempt that length, and it really does a fantastic job of introducing the right amount of elements and sustaining interest throughout all of its parts. It does so much in terms of letting you understand this conflict through having our characters experience different situations and get to know different people. That is just done so well, and I love just how developed some of these characters are. They can only get so much screen time because you can't give, you know, six characters 30 minutes of screen time each, but you do really get the sense for who these people are, and that is done more than most classic Who stories for sure, and the supporting cast in this one is an absolute standout from the entirety of Classic Who. You have people with these very different positions, whether it is a Thal that you see just go too far, or whether it is a Khaled that you see really attach to Davros and really be committed to Davros, or have questions about the ethics and the morals of what they're doing. All that stuff is balanced so well, and Davros is one of the best villains in the show. He's so good within this, and the dialogue scenes in particular between the Doctor and this villain are so captivating and compelling to watch. This one does so much, it's impossible for me to fully sum up what I like about it in just a quick couple of minutes here, but if you want to check out my in-depth review, then I highly recommend that because I put a lot of time into that, and I really explored what makes this story good, at least for me. But to just leave you with one more thing, I would say that in terms of Genesis of the Daleks and its quality, it passes not only the test of time, but the test of the reputation that fans who adore it have created. Because there's stories where they are just so beloved that you're going to have high expectations going into them, and this one, that was absolutely the case for me, even though I'd seen it before, and it fully delivered, and it was genuinely really, really, really good, and one of the best Classic Who stories I have ever seen. And that's that, my ranking for the stories of Doctor Who Season 12. If you have a ranking of these that you'd like to share, 
feel free to leave it down below. I suspect it won't be that different from mine. I know there's some people where you definitely will diverge, but my opinions probably fall close in line with whatever the consensus might actually be of these stories, at least relative to one another. And granted, there is no such thing as a true consensus when it comes to a Doctor Who serial, but I don't think I'm that far off from overall opinions on these things. So like I said, if you've got a ranking to share, feel free to leave it down below. I do hope to see you soon. We are kicking off season 13 of the show next Sunday. I am so excited to talk about this entire season. I have a lot of things to say, so I hope you will join me for that. But if not, that is totally cool. So long as you know that I appreciate your time here today. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a lovely week.